then uh, we'll, we shall continue with the second part of the module 3 in this session. So, um, the module uh, 3, uh, second part consists of the machine instructions and the programs. Uh, we shall uh, uh, study the following topics under this content. Memory location and addresses, memory operations, uh, instruction and instruction sequencing and other same modes. Right? So, we shall go through one by one. Uh, first is the memory location. First is the concept of memory location and the addresses. So first we shall see what is the organization of the memory, how the programs and the, how the instructions of a program and the data is being stored in the memory location and how the contents are, uh, how the contents can be accessed using the memory addresses. So memory, it is basically consists of millions of storage cells, each capable of, each cell is capable of storing one bit of information. Okay, so this each group of, so the group of n bits is being combined into a group of n bits. Uh, each bit is being combined into a group of n bits uh, where a group of 8 bits is going to form one byte. Okay, so each group of n bits is referred to as a word of information and each word can be accessed during one memory read or write cycle. That means every during every uh, memory operation a group of uh, uh, n bits that is either 8 bits or 16 bits or 32 bits can be read or written into a particular memory location. So this group of n bits it is called as the word length. Okay, so one word, complete word can be accessed during uh, a memory operation that is accessed in the sense read or write uh, operation. So each memory location is accessed using either a symbolic name or an address. So how do we name a memory uh, location? That is either uh, each memory location is being represented either as we can see here, each memory location is being represented by a symbolic name. So the symbolic name here, I can represent this symbolic name as in the capital letters only as S-U-M, okay. So or an, a symbolic name as capital A. So where I can store the uh, few uh, bits of information, okay. So this is the way how we can represent each memory, uh, each memory location. Uh, each memory location. So each memory location is accessed using a symbolic name or a address. So next we are having to retrieve information from the memory either for one word or one by eight bit. Okay. So address for each locations are needed. Okay. So if there are some uh, uh, k bit addresses uh, are there. So we are having two to the power of k addressable locations. So this is uh, important and together the whole uh, space of locations are going to form the memory space. Okay, so 24 bit uh, memory, it is going to, if you are having a 24 bit to represent a memory, if 24 bits are as, uh, is used to represent an address, how many addressable locations will be having? That is 2 to the power of 24 addressable locations, so that contributes to 16 megabytes. Okay, so similarly, if you are going to use a 32 bit address to represent a whole address of a memory location, so uh, how many addresses will be there? What will be the size of the memory? It is nothing but 2 power of 32. Okay, so that is, uh, so this contributes to nothing but 4G. That is the 4 uh, gigabytes of data. Okay, so to conclude, so for if I use 32 bit length to represent each address, so how many such locations are they having? That is nothing but 2 to the power of 32 locations. Okay, so these many addressable locations will be there. So this is the organization of how the data, uh, the information is being stored in the memory. Okay, so next we are having the representation how a memory is being represented uh, in the, um, how a memory word is represented in memory and here figure A represents a sign integer and figure B represents the four characters. Okay. So this for figure A, an unsigned integer. So here the word length, it is 32 bits, uh, B0, B1, B2 to 
B31. So this extreme bit, uh, this is called as the MSB bit. So it represents the sine bit. Uh, okay, so 0 is used for positive numbers and 1 represents the uh, value. 1 here represents the negative number. Okay, so this is the representation of the signed integer. So similarly, a character, 4 uh, character can be represented using this particular format. Okay, so this 8 bits is used to store the uh, ASCII characters. So every character is represented using 8 bits. So next, um, uh, now another important concept that is uh, um, associated with the memory called as the byte addressability. What do we mean? Uh, what do you mean by byte addressability? Or what are the different types of byte uh, memory byte addressing schemes? Okay. So basically, we shall understand uh, what do you mean by the byte addresses. So byte addresses, it is uh, uh, first, it is uh, very difficult to assign the uh, individual addresses to individual bits. Okay, so the it will be uh, clumsy. So therefore, what happens? The most practical assignment would be to form or to assign uh, the addresses to the successive bytes. So instead of assigning the um, addresses to the bits, a group of bits are organized to form a byte, and for every byte, the addresses have been assigned. So this is called as the byte addressability. Okay. So, uh, the practical assignment is to have the successive addresses referred to successive byte locations in the memory and this is called as the byte addressable memory. So, what do you mean by the, how do we uh, have the addresses in the memory, how the addresses are going to appear in a sense. If, the, if this is the memory, so if the address starts at uh, uh, 0, Okay, so uh, next address starts at a location of 4. So next 8. So this is what we call it as a byte addressable. Okay, so if the word, uh, so byte locations have addresses 0, 1, 2. If the word length is 32 bit, their successive words are located at 0, 4, 8. Okay, so I repeat. So if the word length, of the, if the word length here, if it is equal to 32 bits, Okay, so 32 bits is nothing but contributes to 4 bytes. So each byte, each word uh, is being stored in successive byte location. 0, 1, 2 and 3 represents the different bytes. First byte, second byte, third byte, fourth byte of the same word. Okay, so therefore, so second word begins with, uh, second value begins with 4. So 0, 4, 8, um, so next 12 in that sense the addresses are assigned. Okay, so this is called as a byte addressability. So next there are two forms of byte addressing schemes or what we call it as a um, two forms of memory assignments. One is called as the big Indian and little Indian assignments. So these are the two, two forms of memory assignments. Uh, one is the big Indian and another one is the little Indian. So here the, these are the bytes. Uh, so this is the big Indian assignment and this is the little Indian assignment. So here you are having the byte addresses and this represents the word addresses. So here you can clearly uh, look into the, um, this is the uh, uh, bytes, byte addresses. Okay, so here in the big Indian assignment, we can see that these uh, uh, higher order bytes of the word, okay, higher order, uh, higher bytes of a word, it is occupying the lower address. This is occupying the lower address, okay. And similarly, the uh, lower uh, bytes of the data is occupying the higher address. So that form of assignment, we call it as a big Indian assignment. We find this one in some of the uh, systems like PowerPC and Motorola systems. This form of me memory assignment, it is being formed. Okay, so the second form of memory assignment is the little Indian assignment. So where we can clearly see that these are the word addresses and byte addresses. So lower bytes are going to occupy the lower, uh, lower bytes of data are going to occupy the lower address and the higher bytes of data. These are the higher bytes of data which are occupying the higher bytes of mem uh, address. Okay. 
So this form of assignment is called as the little Indian assignment. Okay. So uh, this uh, form of assignment, so this is called as the memory assignment schemes which can be big Indian and little Indian assignment schemes. So uh, one numerical example we can take uh, 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 based on this particular big Indian and little Indian. So in this particular, in the exam, they will ask uh, one problem, they will give some memory address and um, the question will be of... Uh, uh, um, write the following address in the big Indian assignment form and little Indian assignment form. Okay, so this particular example, so numerical example. So this, uh, the memory example will be 2, 2. This is the data given 2, 2, 3, 5, 4, 4, 5, 6. So this is the data that has been, this is the data that can be given and this particular data has to be returned in the big Indian assignment and the little Indian assignment. So big Indian assignment as we don't know, first we have to order the data in this way, 32, 30, uh, 22, 35, 44, 56. So this is the big Indian assignment in which in this order the assignment the addresses will be assigned and similarly for the little Indian assignment so what will be the addresses here this byte is going to occupy this position so next to 44 35 and 22 so this is what the problem that can be asked on the uh, related to big Indian and little Indian memory assignments so next to begin with uh, word alignment, how to align the words of the memory, right? So the memory, uh, the address ordering of bytes, so this is called as the memory alignment or word, what we call it as a word alignment. So the memory words, uh, the words are said to be aligned in memory uh, if they begin at a byte address, that is the multiples of number of bytes in a word, okay? So if it is a 16 bit number, so the word addresses will be 0, uh, 2, 4 and so on. If it is a 32 bit address, the addresses, successive addressable locations will be 0, 4, 8. So what is the meaning of that in the sense, if you are going to draw a memory map like this, okay, so this word alignment is nothing but if the word, if the total word length if it is 16 bit, okay, uh, the word size if it is 16 bit, if the first address starts as 0, then the second address will be uh, from 2, 4, uh, next to 6, 8 and so on. Why is that? Is Because, uh, okay, so 0 and 1, uh, 0 and uh, 1 position, the first word is going to occupy these bytes. So next word will begin at this particular boundary and next this and this. So this is called as the word alignment. Okay, so if the word size is 16 bit, the addresses will begin at 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. On the other hand, if the data, if the address are, is going, if the word is 32 bit in length, the addresses will begin at 0, 4, 8 and so on. Okay, so the next if it is 64 bit, okay, 64, 64, uh, so it will be in terms of multiples of uh, 8, 0, 8, 16 and so on. Okay, so this is called as the word um, uh, byte addressability. In order to achieve a flexible memory assignment system, this form of uh, memory and uh, word alignment uh, form is being followed. Right. Okay. So next, we're moving ahead with the concepts of the memory. So what operations we can perform on a memory? So the two important uh, operations that we can perform on a memory is the memory read and write operations. Okay. So memory, it contains the data on the programs when the program is getting executed. So the data and the instructions are loaded into the memory. So it is essential to read the contents of the memory. So how do we read? By using the memory read operation. 
Okay, so memory operation. So this particular it operation, memory read operation is called as a load operation and memory write operation it can be, it is called as a store operation. Okay, so here what happens, load operation it is nothing but a read or fetch operation and what happens here, the contents of the memory, copy the contents. So here whatever is the content of the memory, load operation is in the sense the respect the designated or whatever the question the memory that from where the uh, content has to be read so the content of that is being uh, uh, copied from there into a respective destination the destination can be a register or another uh, any other uh, uh, it can be from one memory location to another or it can be into a register. So basically a load operation is nothing but a read operation where we are copying the contents of uh, uh, the memory in question into the register. Okay, so registers can be used. It is a, a read operation. Okay, so the direction of information flow is from memory to the registers. Registers are nothing but the processor registers. And similarly, the second operation what we are having is the store operation or the write operation. So here what happens, overwrite here, the, we are trying to whatever the results that are there in the processor registers, from there the contents, uh, it can be stored into a respective location into the main memory right so this is the main if this is the memory location contents from the processor register can be uh, returned back into this okay so this form of operation is called as the store operation okay so here the contents of the we are going to override the contents in the memory so whatever the previous contents were there in the memory so that gets over return okay so address and data, so what we are going to do here, the store, this operation is called as a store operation and similarly here the registers can be used for uh, implementing this memory store operation. Okay, so next we have now until now uh, seen what do you mean by memory, different types of memory assignments, uh, how we can uh, assign the addresses in a memory. Uh, and uh, next is uh, the uh, what type of operations we can perform okay so these are all the concepts related with the memory <coughs> so next to move ahead next we are having the concept of instruction and instruction sequencing okay so in order to write a program so we have to understand uh, the flow of uh, uh, program instructions how the flow is going to happen and how the addresses uh, uh, how the programs are being uh, uh, executed in a sequential or in a straight line manner okay and also understand the concept of branching right so before understanding uh, all these concepts let us look at the what are the different types of instructions typically the program can contain Okay, so the instruction types, the data transfers, the instruction can be the data transfers between the processor and the processor registers. It can be the arithmetic and the logical operations on the data or it can be uh, the instructions type can be the program sequencing and the control and the instruction types can also be the IO transfers, alright, okay. So now we shall see, uh, before going into the um, straight line sequencing, we shall see the different formats in which a program, assembly language program can be written. So to, um, to start with, the simpler form of notation in which the instructions can be written uh, is the uh, register transfer notation. So this uh, particular notation was used to uh, write a simple form of code, okay. So uh, because of its flexibility, uh, it was a simpler language to represent. So this was called as a register transfer notation. It identifies a location by the symbolic name standing for its hardware binary address. So every location here, the every operand here is being represented by a symbolic name, okay. 
So the symbolic name represents the memory location and if the registers have been R used as an operands, they are represented by R0, R1 to Rn. Uh, it is represented as a registers. Okay, that is the way how to distinguish between a register and a memory location. As in this example, we can see this is the memory location and these are the registers. Okay, so here we are having uh, this form of representation is called as the register transfer rotation. Contents of a location are uh, denoted by placing square brackets around the name of the location. So usually if it is a memory location, so LOC is the name of a memory location, it contains some data, right? It is represented in the capital letters and it is having some data, example 10. So this, uh, the, for the memory location, we uh, enclose the square bracket. So this represents one of the operand. Okay, so what this particular contents uh, of R1 plus R2, first we are tra transferring, uh, there is a small modification here. Okay, so first we are transferring the contents of location into R1, location, location is memory location. Okay, location, LOC is the name of a memory location. So, value 10, that has been first transferred into R1, register R1. So, then the contents of register R1, it is added with R2. See, whatever operand is there, it is enclosed in a square bracket. So, this form of representation, it is called as a register transfer notation. The resultant of these, it is placed in the register R3. Okay. So, this form of representation, it is called as the uh, register transfer uh, notation. Okay. So, where the operands can either be a registers or it can be a memory location. Right. Okay. So, uh, this particular machine uh, register transfer notation was not so flexible uh, as the complexity of the instructions uh, went on increasing. Okay, they thought of uh, introducing the pneumatic code, so that is what we call it as an assembly language notation, which was simpler to represent and uh, more flexible compared to this RPN. So, we are having uh, machine instructions and programs could be written in, in a more uh, easier manner using the assembly language notation uh, where the uh, every pneumatic code was used to represent the uh, instruction. Okay, after uh, knowing about the different types of instruction formats, now we shall solve a numerical problem. Uh, the, the form of the question uh, in the exam will be asked for 6 marks, evaluate A plus B into C plus B, uh, C plus D. So, we have to write the uh, assembly language code using the 3 address uh, format, uh, instruction format, 2 address and 1 address instruction formats. Okay. So, now first we shall uh, uh, deal with the 3 address instruction format. So, here as uh, we have um, learned that the 3 address contains the uh, opcode followed by source 1, source 2 and destination. So, here uh, first we shall try to, these are their memory locations. So, which is now being stored um, A and B represent the memory locations as indicated here M of A plus M of B. Okay. So, these are the contents of the memory location A and B. These are added and the resultant is being stored in the register R1. Okay. So, similarly, we are having the contents of uh, memory location C and D. Memory location C and D is being added and the resultant is being stored in the register R2. Okay. So, the resultant is stored in R2. So, now R1 contains uh, A plus B and R2 contains C plus D. So, the resultant of R1 plus R2, we have to multiply R1 and R2 and the resultant uh, it will be uh, and uh, we have to R1 plus R2 uh, comma X, right. So, we are now uh, whatever the R1 and R2 is being multiplied and the resultant is being stored into the um, memory location X. Right. So, this represents the 3 address instruction and moving uh, for, uh, forward we are having the same thing uh, 
uh, we have to represent in the form of a two address instruction. Okay, so what do we mean by two address instructions? So as it is represented as uh, a comma, um, so move. Uh, we are having only one source and followed by destination. One, uh, this is the op code followed by the source and the destination. Okay. So, here what happens? We are trying to load the contents of uh, A uh, into the memory location uh, R1. Uh, so, here R1 contents it is loaded into the uh, sorry M of A that is the memory location A it is being stored in the register R1. So, then B is being added to R1. right? So, then what we are going to do R1 now contains the resultant of A plus B. R1 now contains the result of A plus B. So, similarly R2 in R2 first we are trying to move C into R2 and A, D is added into R2. R2 register now contains C plus D. right? So, now these two R2 is added with uh, it is multiplied with uh, R1 okay, R2 uh, R1 multiply and then the resultant will be stored in R1 which is finally moved into the register X. So, as we have seen uh, when we move from um, um, when we move from 2 address to 3 address the length of the code will be increased. Okay. So, now from the 2 address you can see uh, we are going to write the same uh, set of instructions using the what we call the one address instructions. So, in the one address instructions as we have learned that the there is only the op code followed by either the source or the destination followed by source or the destination. right? So, depending upon the instruction type the uh, this thing the operand can either act as a source or it can act as a destination. right? So, here the load A. So, what happens here? The memory uh, the contents of the memory location A it is added in it is being transferred into A C. A C is nothing but our accumulator. It is being uh, transferred uh, into the accumulator. So, then the contents of accumulator now contains A. right? So, for this A we are trying to add B right? Okay. and uh, now accumulator now contains A plus B. So, this value will be stored up in the register accumulator it contains A plus B. The, uh, okay. the result of this will be stored in the variable T. Right? So, now accumulator values are being, uh, are being stored in the register T. Right? So, we are having store T. So, next uh, load C, what we are having in the load C? Okay. So, again the accumulator is loaded with the contents of uh, uh, the uh, with the memory location C. So, then again add D to the contents of accumulator and multiply with the T. Right? So, accumulator which now contains uh, C into D. Okay. So, uh, for C into D which accumulator contains C into D for this you are trying to uh, multiply with T. right? So, okay. so, the resultant which is there again in accumulator finally, we are going to store back the contents of accumulator into the memory location X. right? So, this is the one address instruction where uh, the accumulator is treated as one of the operand. Okay. Uh, so, next uh, after uh, knowing about the one address instruction, so next we are having a look at uh, zero address. So, what do you mean by zero address? Only op code is present, no uh, operand is being specified uh, explicitly in the instruction. It is understood the top of stack usually is the instruction. right? So, we are having evaluate A plus B into C plus D. So, here the same expression how we are going to write the sequence of instructions in terms of what we call uh, in terms of uh, the uh, zero address instructions is that. So, first we are going to push this A uh, memory location contents onto the stack. Okay. So, then what happens our stop of stack contains uh, uh, this particular A. So, then again we are pushing B. right? So, add A plus B. So, now top of stack A plus B it is been added and the resultant is being stored in top of on to the top of stack as 
you can see a TOS represents the top of stack. Okay, so A plus B it is uh, transmitted into the top of stack. The top of stack now contains the value of A plus B. So similarly, we are having the top of on to the top of stack. We are moving C and D, and the resultant of C and D is again stored on the top of stack, right? Okay. So now multiply. Okay, what you are going to multiply? This particular, this whatever A plus B is multiplied with the top of stack. So then the resultant is being transmitted from TOS top of stack into the memory location X. So this is what is the zero address instruction format, right? Okay. So now we have seen how to write a given instruction using um, in the assembly code using one address, two address, zero address, one address, two address, three address formats, right? Okay. Moving forward, we are having. Uh, how the use of registers are going to improve the performance of the system. So, using the registers. So, these registers are faster, they are able, able to uh, store small amount of data, but they are able to provide a very faster access to the processor, because the processor uh, is, uh, the registers are present within the processor, the whatever the information is made, uh, is stored in the registers, it is quickly accessible by the processor, okay, by the ALU during the execution of the program. So, the number of processors is uh, smaller, example 32 registers need 5 bits. So, here uh, 32 registers, usually 32 registers, 16 registers, uh, it can be uh, uh, defined or designed depending upon the type of uh, processor, okay. So, this is going to potentially increase the speed up of processing and uh, it is going to minimize the frequency with which the data is moved back and forth between the processor and the main memory, because it is a storage, it acts as a storage of uh, temporary results and it is going to uh, store the data and the operands, right. So, next moving forward, we are having the instruction execution and uh, straight line sequencing. So, what actually is the straight line sequencing? To understand the program flow and execution, we need to understand how the programs are executed. What is the manner in which the programs are getting executed? Okay, how the branching is going to affect the flow of execution, right? So, now for example, consider the following uh, program which is uh, uh, stored in the memory. Okay. So, this structure we call it as a memory map of a program, right. So, this particular memory map it contains uh, what we call uh, it is uh, containing the a program. Okay. So, it contains this part is called as a program segment and this part is called as the data segment, right. So, this here you can see this the addresses are clearly mentioned here i, i plus 4, i plus 8 and so on. So, when you can distinguish it as i, i plus 4, i plus 8, you are going to call it as a byte addressable and the word length is said to be 32 bit. Okay. So, here one memory operand per instruction, what do we mean by that? In every instruction you take there is a one memory operand here first instruction there is A, there is B and there is C here. So, therefore, there is one instruction, uh, one memory operand per instruction. So, the what is the word length here? The word length is 32 bit and the memory is said to be byte addressable. Why it is byte addressable? You can see here, if the addresses are going to begin at I, I plus 4, I plus 8. So, you are going to call it as a byte addressable as we have discussed earlier. Okay. So, full memory uh, address can be directly specified in a single uh, instruction word. Okay. So, every instruction you take, uh, the execution of an instruction is a two phase process. So, first phase is the instruction phase, a fetch phase and then followed by instruction execution phase, a phase, right. So, instruction fetch phase. So, what happens here? The instructions here are fetched line by line. 
uh, in the sequential order unless and until a branch instruction has been met the instructions are picked up uh, sequentially one after the other depending upon the addresses that are placed here and that is called as a sequential execution or we call it as a straight line execution. The address of the uh, program counter we call it as if it is loaded program counter when the execution begins here our program counter is loaded with this address. So, if it is byte addressable automatically the contents of PC are updated by a value of 4 every time. So, this is called as the sequential execution where the instructions are fetched one by one, one after the other in the order and that is called as the sequential execution and straight line execution. Right. Okay. So, now containing a straight line program for adding n numbers. So, why we need to introduce the concept of branching? So, we shall clearly understand with the help of the following figure. So, the, for the program structure here, you are, uh, now you consider a simple example of adding n numbers. There are n numbers stored in the memory, right. So, there are m1, num1, okay, num1, num1 is a memory, uh, it is a integer, I think it is a, some number, array of numbers, num1, num2, num3 and so on, right. So, here we are going to see here, you can see here num1, num2, num3, all these unto num n. So, these are all the integers or the data values operands what we have stored. So, this sum, the resultant of n number of uh, uh, numbers have to be stored up in the SUM, sum is a memory location. So, this is a purely byte addressable where the first instruction is being stored here I uh, move num1, the value of first uh, number 1 is being moved into the register R0. So, for this register R0, now R0 contains num1, right? The value of first number is being moved into R0. So, now if there are some 100 numbers, we you can see now sequentially we have to write some 100 times that add statement has to be repeated. So, so that for R0 you are going on adding plus num2 add R0 comma num2 in the next line you are adding num3 comma R0 same statement is it is being sequentially written n number of times depending upon how many numbers are there so many add statements have been repeated right. So, this form it is called as a straight line uh, program for adding n numbers okay n numbers. So, if this is the case it is going to occupy too much time and memory space is said to be uh, uh, wasted because uh, n uh, same statement it has been repeated multiple times right ok. So, this what happens um, in order to uh, eliminate this drawback. So, the concept of branching was uh, said to be introduced. So, what we are going to see next right. So, first we hear the concept of branching was said to be introduced. So, here the same statement it is repetitive statement is only written once ok and it is being put up in a loop what we call it as a loop right. First the count same data values you are going to uh, take same task of adding n numbers ok. The total count of adding n it is being stored up in n ok. What is the difference between a small n and capital N? small capital N represents the memory location of where the total number of elements has to be added. So, that value N is stored. Okay. So, this is the symbolic name of a memory location. This is the value of how many numbers size of number of elements to be added. Yeah, SUM represents the memory location where the resultant has to be stored. Right. So, now that same program which was shown in the previous slide. So, it has been modified using the concept of branching right. So, here move. So, now we are going to store in the register R1. It is like we are moving n how many numbers to be added right. R1 is acting like a counter or counter to keep track of how many times we have to execute the state. It is a counter right. So, clear R0. R0 is acting like a adder adder or uh, to keep track of the sum of n numbers ok. So, this is what the add repetitive add statements in the previous slide it is 
been represented with the loop. So, this thing here it is a repetitive statements have been represented with a loop. Determine the address of the next number and add next number to R naught. Okay. So, each time the PC is loaded with the address of the next number and that value will be added. Okay. So, what we are going to do determine the address of next number and add that next number to R naught. So, next what we are going to do decrement R 1, decrement R 1. So, here we have initialized uh, uh, R 1 to n. So, when once one time the loop is executed one number. Okay. So, that is R naught is equal to uh, first we can take num 1 will be added. right? So, num 1 is added you are going to decrement the count by 1 and test if the it is greater than 0. Whether the value, okay, what do you mean by branch? It is a branch here the counter value. What is that count value? Which is our counter? R n is a counter. So, when a branch is being implemented, R 1 it is being tested whether it is greater than 0. If it is greater than 0, we go back here. Okay, uh, Determine the address of next number, this next number will be added. Okay, uh, Next number and add next number to R naught. R naught is our adder. Each time we go on adding this numbers into uh, to this particular R naught register. Right. So, when once the condition here branch is greater than 0, go to condition phase, we come here move the resultant sum is there in R naught and it will be stored up into the memory location n. So, this is what the conditional loop is being introduced which, which alters the sequential execution of the program. Okay. So, this tries to reduce the memory space and the time required for execution. Right? Okay. Okay. So, next to continue with now we have uh, uh, now we have uh, completed the task of straight line. Now, you have understood what do you mean by straight line execution and the concept of branching to move ahead. We are having the something called as the condition code and the condition uh, flags. Okay, condition code flags which are indicated in the status register. We also call it as a condition code register or the status register. So, what are these condition codes? During the execution of an instruction, certain results have been uh, produced. Like uh, we have seen in the branching instruction, uh, the uh, branch greater than 0. If uh, certain value during the resultant uh, negative values are appeared or 0 appears or overflow condition appears or a carry appears. So, then what happens accordingly during the result of an operation uh, depending upon the uh, resultant negative values. So, then this uh, negative uh, then this flag will be set to 1. The resultant of an operation is set to be negative value then this flag will be set. So, similarly, if the resultant of an operation is said to be uh, positive, if it results in a, a 0 value, so then this flag will be set. During the arithmetic operation, if an overflow condition uh, appears, right. So, for example, what do you mean by overflow condition? When two numbers of same uh, sign, if they are uh, if they are added and uh, if they are if the values are going to result in uh, out of range okay if they are going to range that is called as a out of range uh, then that condition is called as a overflow condition so that uh, will be uh, set to the uh, one when the overflow condition is going to occur so during similarly when the operations uh, are there it uh, this particular carry flag also uh, when the operation results in a carry this flag will be set to 1 otherwise by default it will be set to 0. So, different instructions af af affect the different flags in a uh, different flags de depending upon the situation and the outcome of the instruction. Okay. So, these flags have been defined in a register called as a condition status register or it is called as a uh, condition code register. right? So, here the condition code register where you can see the picture of how where the condition code it is there, it is placed within the processor. Uh, along with your other registers like um, uh, program counter, MAR, MDR uh, uh, control, this instruction
ignition register control unit this is our control unit okay so we are having uh, the status register so this is our status register and uh, what are the status register contents it is illustrated here the flags in the status register we are having uh, bits b0 to b7 so in this way the each bit it will be either set to uh, it will be either set to 0 by default it will be set to 0 or it will be set to 1 dependent uh, upon the result of the uh, resultant of an operation right so this uh, figure illustrates uh, the example of how which flag will be set to 1 so there are two values like two integer values a and b the binary value of it it is represented as follows so a and b right so here you can see a carry is generated so therefore a carry flag is being set and similarly you are having what we call here the zero okay zero flag will be uh, the resultant so this is the thing if a carry is being generated out of uh, the resultant uh, addition here extreme msb bits so then c is equal to 1 that carry flag will be set to 1 so then if the resultant of an operation if they are same comparison then what happens the zero flag okay so if the so this way the condition flags uh, can be used to define uh, uh, it can be used to define the outcome of a particular uh, instruction right okay so until now we have seen uh, all the different uh, uh, instruction sequencing straight line sequencing uh, branching and uh, other uh, condition code how the condition code flags affect uh, uh, the uh, how the instructions uh, execution is going to affect and how the values can be stored in the condition code registers okay so in the next session we will uh, go ahead with the different addressing mode